Jeffrey here. In this video, I'm going to show you the five powerful things you can do when you're in the brink of a divorce and you're trying to change your partner's mind and get her back. And I really want you to stay till the end of this video because what I'm going to show you here are the things that no other coaches are talking about. And it's also not the easiest thing to do as well, but it's the same five things that all the men that I teach are doing. And if it's been working for them, I'm sure it'll work for you as well. So be sure to stay till the end here because I don't want you to miss any one of these five things. And in case we haven't met, my name is Jeffrey and I help men in long-term relationships or in marriages by empowering them with the right skills and mindset and knowledge to be able to create this thriving relationship for themselves. So if you want more videos that can help you create this thriving relationship of your dreams, then I want you to subscribe to this channel and click the bell button as well to be notified when I post new videos three times every single week. Now, real quick, before we begin this video, I want to let you know that a few spots have opened up for my free masterclass on the five proven steps to rebuilding your relationship from the ground up. So if you want in on that masterclass, then be sure to stay till the end for the announcement on how you can get in on that masterclass. Now, the first point I want to make here is that you need to understand the stage here. You need to understand what is actually happening. Why does she want divorce in the first place? Because if you don't understand this, then no other actions that you can take will really make sense to you. And if you watch my other videos on this, you will know why she feels hopeless right now. And so understand first that when people are thinking about how do they feel about the relationship today, they're using their imagination of the future of what that relationship will look like as a gauge. If they can paint a very positive picture, a very hopeful picture in the future, then they can feel good about the relationship today. Now, what determines how they imagine the future is now based on the past though. So the past determines her imagination of the future and her imagination of the future determines the present, how she feels today about the relationship. And the reason why she feels hopeless today is that she cannot picture a very bright future with you specifically. And she cannot picture a bright future with you because of all the past things that happened. But understand here that in this whole past, present, future look that we're having here, these are all very emotion based. So if you want to change your mind and win her back, you need to do two things. One is you need to be able to change her emotions today and prove to her that the past doesn't equal the future or doesn't have to equal the future. And two, not only do you have to convince her of this, but your convincing needs to be done on a very emotional level, not on a logical level. So you can't just tell her, for example, hey, you know, honey, the past doesn't equal the future. You know, I'm going to change. I'm going to become a better person. It's going to be a bright future. Because if you say all these things, what you're doing is you're appealing to the logical side but you're not appealing to the emotional side. So what I'm gonna show you here is how you can do those two things and actually appeal to the emotional side. So the first thing you want to do is a mental shift. It's not something you do, but it's simply a mental shift that you want to do. And is that whenever you are finding yourself in this brink of divorce, you want to find this within yourself to go from a place of wanting and not needing. So the biggest mistake I see people make when their partner tells them that, you know what, I want a divorce and they start to panic and they start to act as if they're the ones who have everything to lose in this relationship, in this whole negotiation. And they make this concept of saving that relationship or getting back that partner into a strong need. But as we said, this will cause you to do a lot of needy things, a lot of toxic things, a lot of very controlling things that will actually sabotage your outcome. They will actually push her away even more. And not only that, it puts you in a very bad negotiating position. It puts you in a very weak and valueless position where it feels like, you have everything to lose and she has nothing to lose from this whole transaction. And so you're not really giving her a reason to even be curious about your changes, to even see your changes, let alone changing her emotions about you and your future. So if you're not wanting to come from a place of needing, do I go the other extreme and actually act aloof, act indifferent? Like, you know, what a lot of coaches say, which is, oh, just play the no contact rule. Well, this is damaging also because if you watch my other video on this, you know, the thing about long-term relationship that you have to realize is that you have a long history, you have a long past that affects how she pictures the future. And so if you're pretending to be indifferent, if you're pretending to play aloof and play the no contact rule, what happens is it shows her that you don't really understand what the true issue is, or that you don't even understand there is an issue in the first place. And that you're just trying to play this manipulative game, this childish games of playing hard to get in order to win an affection back. And this might work in a dating sense, but this doesn't work in the long-term relationship sense. The right balance is between the two things here, between needing and being completely aloof is a fine balance here of wanting. This is a spot when you're clearly expressing to your partner that, hey, I want to work on this. I want to work on myself. I want to reconcile this marriage, but 
being in a place where if push comes to shove and your partner wants to leave and is dead set on leaving, you are in a position where you can walk away and mean it as well. And if you're thinking that this is crazy, like how can I walk away from this relationship? Think about two things. So understand that when you come from a place of wanting and not needing, you are putting yourself in a much stronger negotiating position to actually get the outcome that you want. So imagine yourself as a salesperson, for example. If you're coming to a negotiation, a sales call, a sales interaction, and you're coming from a place of need, the odds that you'll get your outcome of that person buying your product and seeing the value in what you have to offer is much lower. But if you come from a place of want, you put yourself in a much stronger position and ironically, by simply being able to walk away, you're increasing the chances that your partner doesn't wanna walk away. And not only that, when you come from a place of need here, whatever you do, all your actions will seem very ingenuine. It will seem like you're doing this, you're making all these changes, you're asking all those questions, whatever it is you're doing is tainted by the fact that you're just trying to get her back. And that can be misconstrued as being manipulative and being tricky and not being very genuine. But what she's looking for are genuine changes in you to convince her emotionally that the future can look different. But she can never feel that if deep down she understands that, hey, what you're doing here is not something permanent. It's not something that you're doing because you're doing it for the sake of doing it, but you're doing it simply to get me back. And that once she gets back to the relationship, you will go back to all your old ways and your motivation to better yourself will go down. Because why? Because you're attaching the reason why you're motivated, why you're bettering yourself, to the fact that you need her back right now. So again, the first thing you want to do is to make this mental shift of coming from a place of want and not need. So the third point here is to understand what the problem is exactly. Right? So understand that one of the things we're trying to do here is to simply change your partner's minds about the future. Right? That the past doesn't always have to equal the future. Now here's when most people get this wrong. So what a lot of people do is they try to have this conversation with their partner to say, hey, can you tell me what's going on? What's you know, what is missing from this relationship maybe. But the problem is like now you're in a position where you're in the brink of a divorce and the conversation can get pretty difficult. It can get very, very tense. And your partner is gonna do everything she can to resist you, not consciously, but subconsciously. And when you meet this resistance, you're going to wanna to back off. And so you stop asking the questions, you stop digging deeper because you simply don't understand how to push past that resistance. So they get in this position where they think they know something. You know, they ask a few questions and they think they know what the core problem is, but they don't really know what the core problem is. And then to make it worse, they watch some YouTube videos about, hey, here's how you better yourself, right? You gotta portray yourself as this like hard to get guy or this value, high value guy on social media, for example. You gotta play no contact, play aloof. Um, you gotta go to the gym, work out, you know, become richer, become more successful in your work, whatever it is. So you have all these ideas of how you can better yourself but often the dangerous part is that these ways of bettering yourself, it's not really the ways of bettering yourself that she was thinking about, that she's looking for. And this puts you in a really bad cycle in yourself where you're trying to do all these things to better yourself, but it's not really affecting her emotions in the correct way. And when you see that it's not really affecting her in the correct way, that makes you pretty pissed off. And it just puts you in a really terrible cycle once again. So the skill that I want you to really learn it's a skill of being able to go to the primary source itself, which is your partner at this point, and understanding how to lead conversations in a way that opens your partner up, understanding the right ways of dealing with that resistance so that you can push through that resistance and actually get to the core issue here, and dig far enough so that you can eventually say, and honestly say this in yourself, where you can say, look, if I was you, wifey, I would have done and thought exactly the same thing as you, understanding you know, the full picture now. And this step is very, very crucial because before she can believe in your changes, she needs to understand that you even understand the problem in the first place. Because if you don't understand the problem, there's no way she can believe that you understand the solutions. And for you to understand what those problems are, you need to get to the root core of what the problem is. And a lot of men, again, think that they understand what the root core is, but when they really understand how to dig deeper in the conversations, they realize, man, I was really quite far away from understanding what that root core is. And when she can feel that you understand the problem, then whatever you have to say, whatever solutions you have in mind, whatever changes you make will resonate emotionally with her a lot better. So this is why we say you're not trying to appeal to logic here, you're appealing to her emotions. And this is how you appeal to her emotions, by first understanding the problems enough so that you can prove to her that, hey, I understand the solution as well. Then point number four is being able to express your commitment in a proper way. And I mentioned this in one of my previous videos, but there's four things you can say here. 
And you can feel free to say these four things all at one go. So the first thing you want to say is you want to acknowledge her desire for separation, for space, for a divorce. So you can say, look, I know you want a divorce. I know you feel hopeless about the relationship right now. I totally respect that. The second thing you want to say is express your commitment to bettering yourself, no matter the outcome. So you want to say to her, for example, hey, you know, no matter what you choose to do, I'm still going to keep bettering myself. I'm still going to become the best man that I can be, no matter what you choose to do. And in this step, try to be specific, try to be vulnerable, and try to be relevant. So specific meaning, don't just say you're bettering yourself. If you can, say specifics about how you're bettering yourself. The more specific you make it, the more convincing it becomes. And don't be afraid to be vulnerable as well in the sense of, you know, don't be afraid to be self-deprecating, for example. Say how much of an asshole you were back then. Say how much of a dick you were back then. Say those things and make it relevant. You know, make your changes that you're expressing relevant to what she's actually wanting you to change. And that's where the previous step of discovery plays a role big time. Then the third thing you can say is praise and trust. So at this point, you're gonna have two fears. The first fear is you're gonna fear that she's not gonna be able to see your changes or not willing to see your changes or that if she sees your changes, she's not gonna make the right decision that you want, which is come back together. And so you can express this, this fear that you have through praise and trust rather than expressing your fear through paranoia and being controlling and so on. So for example, you can say, look, you know, I know you're pretty observant. I know you're, you know, you can see changes in people, right? That's the praise part. The trust part is when you can say, look, when I make these changes that you're going to be able to see the changes sometime. And again, when you're saying this phrase, this is where your mindset shift of coming from a place of want and not need will change the tone, will change the words you use as you're saying this. So that you're not saying this as like a needy thing to get her to trick her into seeing your changes, but you're simply saying like, I trust you because you're observant. And you can say that from a place of want. And the last thing you can say here is to simply leave your door open. So you can say, look, for the meantime, I just want you to know that the door is always open and you feel free to talk to me about any issues or to resolve anything that you feel is unresolved. And if you want to learn more about how you can say these four things in a much more powerful way, your pre-commitment in a much more powerful way here, I'm gonna put a link at the end of this video to the video where I explain um, how to say these things in a proper way. Then the fifth thing you need to do is to actually make the right changes and no matter what the outcome is. So, you know, previously in the previous step, you're making all these promises of how you're going to better yourself in a way, you know, you're being specific about it. You're being very vulnerable about it. You're being relevant about it. And now it's time to deliver on that. So you actually need to begin making the right and making the genuine changes within yourself as well. And this means that you cannot be relying on scripts. If you just rely on scripts, again, like we mentioned in the previous video, she can smell that. She can smell that when what you say and what you do doesn't really align together. And once she smells that, she can never really emotionally believe in your changes and believe that the future can be different because she's always going to be suspicious that you're doing this because you simply want her back. It's not something you're doing permanently. And how do you know whether your changes are genuine or not is when you can play out the right tactics, play out the right things, do all the right things without using your willpower, without using your fake it till you make it attitude. And only then can you actually do the things forever. Like, like that's the point where you don't care about whether you have to do this for a year, for two years. You're going to do this because this is a part of you now. And so if you're finding that you're in a position where you have to use a lot of, a lot of your willpower and a lot of your fake it so you make it approach and you're constantly asking yourself like, how much longer do I have to do this? That means that your changes are still not genuine. That you're still not attaching the reason why you're bettering yourself for the sake of bettering yourself. You're still trying to do this to get her back. I would change that mindset first. And you also need to be able to do these things, make your changes, no matter the outcome. So even if your wife chooses to divorce you and ends up divorcing you, it should not change your level of motivation for wanting to better yourself. Because the ironic thing here is that the only way sometimes where she can know that your changes are real, they're genuine, is when you're threatened, you're cornered with the prospect of divorce, and yet you still are motivated, as motivated to better yourself. That's the only way sometimes that she will know that your changes are very, very genuine, that you're doing this simply to better yourself and that your changes are permanent and not simply to get her back. And ironically, when people start to make this mental shift of actually bettering themselves for the sake of bettering themselves and looking for the genuine change rather than looking for the trickeries here, that's the moment when their partner can actually see their changes and they actually want to come back into the relationship. This is when they can emotionally believe in your changes and understand that the past doesn't always have to equal the future. 
But as long as you keep being attached to getting your partner back and having the reason why you're bettering yourself be to get your partner back, you're rarely going to get to the outcome of actually getting your partner back. That's a very ironic thing about this whole scenario that a lot of men find difficult to grasp, but once you grasp it, then you can really put yourself in a very powerful position to reconcile your marriage. And if you want a resource that can help you do these five things flawlessly and actually make the right internal shift within yourself to be able to do this effortlessly and make those genuine changes that we talked about, then you want to join my free masterclass on the five proven steps to rebuilding your relationship from the ground up. And in this masterclass, I'll show you the exact five-step system that all my students have used to go from a place of almost divorcing to a place in a thriving relationship right now. And I'll also show you how you can simplify this process of self-evolution and also rebuilding the relationship so that you don't need to think about a thousand things when you're fixing the relationship, which a lot of people feel is that, but you only need to focus on the one next step, the one next thing you need to focus on in order to better yourself and also better the relationship as well. And I'll also show you some new mindset shifts that you haven't really considered perhaps um, to help equip you with the right mindset so that you can begin doing the right tactics and doing the right things just more effortlessly and more um, effectively as well. So if that sounds interesting to you, then you want to reserve your spot in my masterclass by clicking the link above my head or down in the comments below or the description box below this video as well. And if you're looking for a free resource that can help you guide conversations and lead conversations better, you know, the conversations that never leads to arguments or always leads to productive win-wins, then you want to download the free guide I have for you above my head or also down below this video in the comment section or the description box below this video. And if you're looking for a community where you can post your questions and kind of get support from other members of the community here, then you can join my Facebook group where you can ask your questions and actually get good advice about them from myself or from other members of the community. And if you want to join that Facebook group, the link is also down below this video. In the meantime, I do want to hear from you. You know, leave a comment below on what did you find most insightful or most eye-opening from this video. I'd love to hear from you, so leave a comment below. In the meantime, if you found this video valuable, then give it a like and subscribe to this channel for more content like this one. But for now, I'll leave you with these two other videos on how you can make sense of this whole situation if you're on the brink of a divorce, understanding what to do and what not to do so that you can be better equipped during this process. In the meantime, I'll see you in the next video.